Greetings, Internet, and welcome to Awaiting Input, the tech show that values your opinion as much as it values the news. Today, we're going to be talking about primarily Windows 10 and the updated tech preview for January. Now, Microsoft recently had a press event, and they announced a lot of new products, more than I expected, like the Microsoft Hub and Microsoft Havo. And those are all great things, and if you want to share some of your opinions about those products in the comments, you can. But mainly, we're going to be focusing on Windows 10. Now, if you haven't seen our other demo of Windows 10, I recommend that you watch that so you can see some of the new features coming in the system. And we're going to have a new demo later, once the new January tech preview is released. So, let's jump right into it. There's a lot of new points to talk about here. The first one, which is kind of known by people now, is the integration of Cortana, which is Microsoft's personal digital assistant. So you can control Cortana by talking to your computer. You can say, hey Cortana, and it can do a command, even if you're across the room. But you can also search information and type in commands, and Cortana can give you results just by typing into the search bar in the little taskbar interface. Also, the Action Center has a notifications area and a simple one-click settings to turn items on or off. And one of the confusing parts of Windows 8 was the difference between the settings app and the control panel. Well now, Microsoft brought them together in a new, familiar settings application that will replace the control panel. There's also going to be a new photos application with a completely different but familiar interface. It's new and fresh. It has auto-syncing with OneDrive, it has auto-grouping of duplicate photos and burst shots, and it even has automatic album creation, so you don't have to do any of that manual work. There's some great new Xbox integration features and other gaming features in the system. With the Xbox app, any Windows PC game, at least this is what I was told during the press event, this is pretty cool, there's a game DVR mode so you can jump back to your last 30 seconds of gameplay and record a clip and share it with people, so if a really fun moment happened, you can just have it record, and boom, you're done, and you can share that footage with people. And you can also stream Xbox games to your PC or tablet. And in terms of graphics technology, Windows 10 features DirectX 12, which will give developers the ability to really control how much hardware power is being used at what time. So the developers have more flexibility, and for the user, that basically means CPU performance can be up to about 50% faster on average, and power consumption can be cut in half on average, and that is huge for laptops, especially tablets. Also, Microsoft mentioned that the Office Suite will be included with Windows 10, but I believe that's only on phones and, quote, small tablets. So maybe not on a typical computer, but on phones and small tablets, you can get a free copy of the Office Suite bundled with Windows 10. And one of the big things is the new web browser. We're not sure what it's going to be called yet, but it's codenamed Project Spartan. It features a new rendering engine and a new UI that fits along with the new app designs that are coming in Windows 10. There's a note-taking mode built in where you can essentially freeze a web page with all the links still active. You can add in comments by typing with the keyboard or you can draw and highlight by using pen input. There's a new reader mode built in, kind of like what Safari does. You can take a web page and it will clear the clutter out and format it so it's easier to read, more comfortable for the eyes and whatnot. There is also support for PDF files. A lot of times websites do that annoying thing saying, hey, you need Adobe Reader to read a PDF. Well, now you can just click the PDF file or open up a PDF file from your computer right inside of the browser. And Cortana is fully integrated to Project Spartan as well. So those are a lot of the big new features of Windows 10. And remember, the whole philosophy behind Windows 10 is that it's supposed to be one Windows, one store with universal apps. So Windows 10 runs on tablets, PCs, phones, and the Xbox. This may sound confusing at first, but really, don't overthink it. It's actually really nice for developers because it's easier to write one piece of software and just tailor the interfaces for the different devices. It's still technically one operating system and one name, just tweaked interfaces. Some other little tidbits I'd like to mention. 
Continuum is now going to be functioning in newer builds of Windows. That's essentially a feature that detects whether or not you have keyboards connected to your touch devices. So for example, if you're on a tablet and you have a keyboard and mouse detected, it can run the system like a normal PC. But if you detach the keyboard and mouse, it will ask you if you want to enter tablet mode and it will bring those apps into full screen mode so everything is easier for touch. All right, so that's a quick overview with some of the changes of Windows 10. There's a lot more to come during the Build 2015 conference, so stay tuned. And again, we will be having a demo video of the January tech preview up soon as well. So now, how much does it cost? Well, if you meet the system requirements, and you're on Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, and you upgrade within the first year of the launch, you get Windows 10 for free. So that is pretty special. All right, so that's some of the news. Now I'm just gonna quickly talk about some of my opinions. Now I did another video about Windows 9 earlier on awaiting input, back when we actually thought the name was gonna be Windows 9, but it's Windows 10 now. So I could reiterate on some of those points. You know, saying that it's great that some of these features are now getting in here, like virtual desktops, for example, is a new feature in Windows 10. And we know Linux systems and OS 10 has been doing that for a long time. But I don't like it when people play the copycat game. It's good for other systems to have these features so the consumers can be happy. Because, for example, that reader mode in Project Spartan, you know, that's something Safari has had for a long time. Same thing with PDF support. Safari has had that since OS 10.5. But does it really matter? No, I don't think so. I think it's good that certain companies can catch up at different times. So, that's what I think. But now, I want to know what you think. What do you think about Windows 10? Will you be upgrading? What do you want to see? What don't you like? Let's get a discussion going in the comments. Speak your mind, but keep it PG or PG-13. R, not rated, triple X. No, don't do triple X. <laughs> Just keep it clean, safe for work. All right. Well, thank you for tuning into this episode of Awaiting Input, and I will see you in the not-too-distant future. I'm back. I told you it would be quick. Hey, it's a special time right now for the Computer Clan because we're gearing up to release our new show, Ken Cinema of Shenanigans. If you want to have some good fun, some good laughs, make fun of old movies, or maybe just reminisce of the hit classic Mystery Science Theater, you should really tune into this show. It is launching on January 29th, and we'd love to see what you have to say about it. So tune in. What have you got to lose? All right, and now I will see you in the not too distant future. Or end, la la la, try to keep his sanity with the help of his robot.